Morning baskets are something that have been taking the homeschool world by storm. Everywhere you look, there they are. So you might be wondering, what is this morning basket thing and do I want to do one? That's what we're gonna be answering in this video. Hi, I'm Pam Barnhill, and you can find me at pambarnhill.com where I talk all about morning baskets and morning time with homeschool moms. And I'm also the host of the Your Morning Basket podcast that you can find on iTunes. So morning basket is just another name for a practice that has been going on in homeschool circles for over 30 years now. And it's a time in the day when everyone in the family can come together and learn together about specific subjects. And morning basket is just one of the names for it. Other names that you might hear it called are morning time, circle time, and some people even get a little fancy with their names. They call it things like symposium or power hour, but it doesn't matter what you call it. The practice is still the same. Everybody's coming together, everybody's learning together all at the same time. So one of the first things that people want to know is, do I really need a basket in order to do this? And the answer to that is no. Of all of the things that go into this, the basket is really one of the least important parts of it. One of the most helpful things about having a basket though is having one location to put all of your materials and all of your supplies. Now, you could do this in a plastic bin, you could do this by putting things on a shelf, you could do this by putting things in a tote bag. So the basket is really not that important, but you do wanna keep everything together because once you get a larger family together and even a smaller family like my three kids and you get started with your school day, you don't wanna to have to break to run after books and resources that you're looking for. It is really handy to have it all together in one location. Whether or not that's a basket is totally up to you. So what is the point of this morning basket, morning time, circle time thing anyway? Well, there are a couple of reasons you might want to do this in your homeschool. The first one is the fact that it can be a really efficient use of your school time. Think back to the one room schoolhouse model. So this is a time when you can have kids who are fairly close in age and even some with a little bit of a spread come together to learn about particular topics. We've done things in our morning time like learn grammar together, learn a foreign language together, and even learn history and science together. And there's a good four years difference between the ages of my kids, but it's a really efficient way for us to do this kind of learning. The other thing you might do in a morning basket is you might put those things in there that you would really love to do in your homeschool, but you wonder, where else to put them in your day. So these are things like maybe reading some Shakespeare or some poetry or doing art or even doing composer study or music appreciation or artist study. These are things you might wanna do in your homeschool, but when you sit down to fill out your schedule, they kind of get lost in the middle of the math and the learning to read and the learning how to spell well. So putting those all together in one time and naming it and giving it a purpose means that these things are much more likely to get done. So what subjects do you exactly do during morning time? Well, the truth is you could really do anything you wanna do. The sky is the limit. Um, anything that seems to fit doing a group learning with your family. But we like to break it down into four different kinds of subjects, four different things that you might try doing. And so the four, we call them the four R's. And the four R's are reading, ritual, recitation, and relationship. And let me break those down for you. So morning basket is a perfect time to do reading or read aloud time with your family. And you can choose to read whatever it is that you wanna read. We've read historical things, we've read nature study things. We read things just because they're fun to read. So we might have a chapter book going at any given time. And sometimes we even read picture books related to whatever the subjects are that we happen to be studying at the moment. 
Recitation is simply memorizing things and actually working on memory work is great for active memory, building up your brain cells and making connections with lots of materials. You can also write these words on your heart, some of these beautiful words, and then you'll never be alone if you need uh, strength or encouragement, whether that's Bible verses or poetry. And so we really like to memorize in our morning time and you'll find that kids soak this stuff up. We start with fun poems like ooey gooey about a little worm that gets caught on a railroad track or the yak which is a poem by Hilaire Belloc. He has a lot of great funny poems about animals and starting with that kind of poetry and that kind of recitation is something that kids really enjoy. The next thing that we do in our morning time is ritual. Now, we are a Christian family, and so we really enjoy bringing in some of those ritual elements from our church into our home worship. And so we light a candle during morning time. We take the time to pray for other people. And so whatever elements are going on in your church, you could bring them in to your morning time um, as well. Relationship is the final R, and this one is perhaps my absolute favorite. So often our school days can be disjointed and fragmented because kids are going off to work on different subjects by themselves. But by all sitting together and learning some portion of our schoolwork together, we have this shared collective family culture that we're always gonna be able to hearken back to and draw from and create some of probably the best memories that our kids are gonna have from our homeschools questions you might be having about this morning time practice. One of the biggest ones that people have is how long should it be? How much of my school day should I be giving over to this whole family learning? And the answer is going to vary from family to family. Now, if you have kids who are close together in age and you're able to use this as a really efficient way to teach multiple ages together, this might actually be a large part of your school day. It could stretch to an hour or an hour and a half. But if you're dealing with a wide variety of ages or even just have other circumstances going on like maybe a teen or even a toddler, then your morning time is probably going to be a lot shorter. The younger your children are, the shorter it's going to be anyway because their attention span is only going to be able to take so much. The next question you might be having is what age should I gear morning time for in my family if I have a large age range between my kids? And most moms tend to aim for the upper end of the age range. My friend Heather Tully has 10 kids from teenager all the way down to toddler, and she always gears her morning time towards the older kids in her family. Now the younger kids are in the room, they're playing, sometimes quietly and sometimes not, but she's not quite as worried about aiming everything towards them. They're going to pick up what they can from the morning time and they're gonna cycle back through and get to be exposed to those things again in the future. So she always gears the morning time towards the upper age range. Now, even if you're going to do that, there are a few things you can do to kind of bring the little kids into it. You could always have something in your basket for every age kid. So if you do have some teens and some little kids, at some point during your morning time, you can kind of close it out and let your teens go and then draw the little kids close and read some picture books or do something very specifically just for them, maybe some nursery rhymes or something. But if they're sitting there and they're listening to the memory work, they're listening listening to you read the other things, they're paying attention to the beautiful art, even if they're kind of in and out, you are gonna be amazed at how much they pick up and how much they learn. Now, speaking of toddlers, there is nothing that can wreak havoc on a morning time like a two-year-old or a three-year-old. And a lot of times moms wonder, how am I even gonna get this done when they're loud and they're crazy? Well, honestly, the best tip I have for this is enduring. You just have to outlast them and it's gonna get better as they get older. But a couple of other things that you could do. First of all, don't expect it to be perfect. 
to begin with. You're going to have to teach this two-year-old and three-year-old that this is a time when we're all learning together and my expectation for you is that you're going to behave and be quiet. And it's gonna take a number of starts and stops to get them to understand that. It might take even a couple of months for them to kind of get on board and realize that this is the expectation. Until then, you're just gonna have to constantly be recorrecting them over and over again. And it could be that your morning time is start and stop a lot at first. That's completely normal. And the more they learn that this is how it's going to be, the more they're going to get on board with it. Now, the other thing you could do is have a special box of toys that only comes out during morning time, and that's their special time to get to play with these things they really wanna play with as long as they do it quietly. Other moms start morning time over breakfast or they do morning time during snack time. And so uh, strapping a toddler into a toddler chair and having a bunch of Cheerios or little treats there in front of them that they can eat and work on during morning time is uh, perfect. It's one of the things that's really gonna help bring a little more peace. Now, as they get into the three and four year old age range, they can learn to sit there for a little while. And then if you have safe places like a playroom or a fenced in backyard where they can kind of wander in and out, they can do that too while you continue morning time with your older students. So it just takes a lot of practice and building into making this work. So if you are interested in Morning Basket or Morning Time, we have a ton of great resources for you. Over on my website, pambarnhill.com, we have the archives of the Your Morning Basket podcast, and you can find those on iTunes as well. We start at the very beginning with what is Morning Time or Morning Basket, and then we talk about the four R's and a number of different topics that are related to Morning Basket that are really helpful for moms. We also have a book called Better Together. This one is all about morning time or morning basket and you can find this at your library or on Amazon as well. And we also have it on the website at pambarnhill.com. So if you have any questions at all about morning time, I would love for you to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them for you there.